first cup of coffee. Oh, boy. Uh, you go back there and settle down. You want to go back outside? Okay. Is that what you want to do? He's only been out there all night. They love it when it's 20 degrees. They, just, they bask in the cold, and they just sleep out there, waiting for any kind of uh, intruder, predators, one thing I worry about is the occasional mountain lion, especially in winter when they get hungry and they start scavenging. That would be a confrontation I wouldn't want to see because me or the dogs wouldn't come out so well. Molly, you just have to forgive me. This is a totally unprofessional on my part. Molly, that's it. Get out there. You're eating everyone else's food. That's it. Okay. So I'm giving you a little bit of an audio verite. Now, I do feel much better since uh, cutting carbs. And I realize that uh, the only time that there's a damper on it is if I have anything to, to... I mean, I've cut the drinking to just low-carb, you know, like really dry white wine or a... Uh, cocktail like you know a vodka or whatever short though and I find that when I was in comparing this when I'm dry I do much better I just feel much better it doesn't you know there's no carbs in, in spirits there's no in really dry white wine I think there might be like f five or six for the whole bottle so I think it's it's very low and a lot of people do it but have noticed a metabolic um, change, if you will, a spike in insulin, let's say, during the time of, and how I know this is because as soon as I have something to drink, something to imbibe, no, I'm not one of these uh, Christians that's going to say don't drink, or I'm not going to tell you what to do about anything. Um, I know people that, some of the best people I know Tie one on on occasion, and I, you know what? I really don't blame them, given the world today. I really can't blame them. I'm just saying that when you're, you feel so good when you cut the sugar and you just start kind of low and you have so much energy once you get through the kind of haze phase. I know Frankie knows this that when you add any kind of alcohol to it, not that it has carbs and not, it won't put any weight on you, which is amazing because if you're eating a lot of bread and sugar, it would. Um, but what I noticed is it immediately, uh, for me, it immediately makes me eat, you know, and voraciously. And then I want dinner on top of that. So it's, it sort of wrecks the uh, metabolism for that time where it's working. Now, you can eat more low carb stuff, but what ends up happening is you don't get anywhere because during the time any alcohols in your system, that's really what's being burned, not your weight. So that's no, I don't expect people to go without a drink now and then. I'm just saying, you know, maybe you limit it to a, a day a week or something like that. If you agree with me, um, I think in our society we were just way too grain oriented I started studying grains in the Bible and you know grains are considered precious in the good book here uh, very precious and so you have to figure okay you know when Joseph got his forsaken family uh, when they finally had that big meeting and he revealed himself as the one they'd forsaken and tossed into the pit who was taken into slavery by the pharaoh in Egypt. Well, when all that happened, then they got back together and they had this reunion and everyone was so sorry for what they did to Joseph, but they were jealous of him because he was, you know, the favorite. And it's a long story. We've gone through these stories. But, you know, it had to do with a couple of wives and it had to do with this poor guy, Jacob. And, you know, but we're not going to go through that. What we're going to do is... Yeah, when the idea of having these two wives and, of course, the, 
the offspring from one is jealous of the other, especially if it's the father, you know, it's, it just, the wife that was really beloved was, had one, one son, Joseph. And, and of course the father, uh, Jacob d- dotes over that one and discards the others. So they got jealous and sought to kill him. Okay. <laughs> Sounds simple enough. And, um, and they forsook him and they, you know, it was kind of like a Cain and Abel thing. It was actually Cain and Abel, uh, redo only with more players in the same skit. So now don't read anything into that, that whole Cain and Abel thing. Oh, he's the devil's seed versus, uh, let me explain something to you. You are all, <laughs> we are all the devil's seed. If you want to take it as a fall of man equals some sort of manipulation of the gene pool. Or some kind of thing. Because God works all things through his creation. Through good and evil people. Through all all things. And ultimately you can have faith in that. God's in control, yes. And ultimately we put our faith there when things look really bleak, as they do now. We put our faith there with the Lord. Because he is our, he is our, you know, he won't allow anything to happen that is not written in his plan. There isn't anything that can happen unless it was approved by him. You can't be messed with unless somehow it's approved by him. Whatever suffering that you are going through, you have to realize that it's probably because of some lesson to be learned. Uh, And some suffering seems needless, I, I admit that, and I know that that causes... A lot of people to lose faith. Uh, But all in all, the only place any of us can go when times are really hard, when things are really rough, you know, when things are, you know, um, it could be, you know, you don't have a financial concern, but you have health concerns. It could be you're concerned about the world. So you might have had a pretty good life, and then you're looking at it, you're looking at maybe you won't have that in a year or two. Uh, you know, all those kind of things. Or maybe you're preparing for doomsday. But whatever it is, whatever it is, there's nothing we can do to save ourselves, folks. There's nothing we can do to actually make that difference and we just can't be god we're frail creatures you know the the most i can do is if i cut the sugar uh i get a benefit and and you know i haven't been able to do that always because my stomach would act up now for some reason it's it's fine that's not happening so uh so it works hallelujah but that's about all i can do I have, I have control over that. What I do today, whether I do a podcast or talk to you, I have some control over that. I've got to go in the studio today and, and mix this track, which is, right now it's really hard on this you know, track, and at the same time it's going well. But yeah, you know, do I want to do that today, or do I want to just you know, gear up for uh, a fresher day tomorrow? Or Sometimes I do these podcasts and I'm completely exhausted afterwards and I have to go mix. I'm like, ah, well, gee, how's that going to happen? And somehow the strength is there, you know, somehow supernaturally in a way we're, we're guided. And I just pray right now in the name of Jesus to guide us completely in all our, in what we eat, what we wear, what we do, that we put all our concerns upon him, that he will feed us, clothe us, that he will bring us through in whatever way and teach us what we need to do to, to heal ourselves. In other words, what, what we should eat and what we should not. What we should drink and what we should not. You know? Um, how how could, should we conduct ourselves in this world? What is the, the purpose of, of being here right now? Why were we born at all? Certainly not just to... Um, because no matter how good you have it out there, you could be a billionaire. Okay, fine. You're a billionaire. Here's the, here's the problem that you face. How are you going to enjoy your money when 
there's so much sadness and trouble and pain and sorrow, you're not going to be able to very well. You, you know, you, uh, <laughs> your, uh, your purpose is the, the more you spend, the more people work. That was before that was vilified and, you know, billionaires are targeted to be, become extinct save for the elite ones who've made the deal with the devil. So maybe they all have. I don't know. But all I can tell you is this, that the, the, the billionaires um, d do well when they buy companies and put people to work, when they do houses, put people to work, when they buy airplanes and have them serviced, they put mechanics and people that make airplanes to work, when they have lavish... Um, opulence, all those people have to work. When they sit in their 25-bedroom mansion up in Bel Air, they need people to maintain that place. And God bless him, he's hiring an army of people to come there every day to mow the lawn and to fix the pipes and to fix the electrical and to, to fix the computers and to do this and do that and fix the security and hiring securities to keep out all the riffraff should they try to rip him off. And they have to maintain the boat. So that's another few people that are employed from this guy. Plus, he owns some companies. So that's another few thousand people that are working because of this guy. No, we want him to continue. We don't want him to get depressed. You want him to be there. And when he spends his money, the only thing you, you know, when he spends his money, he is God directed. He may not know it, but the people that are relying on him, the way the whole system works, it's freely give, freely receive in a free market. It's supposed to be that way. Not saying there isn't corruption and fixing the markets and all that stuff that happens. But all in all, when people spend money in the economy, in the private sector, uh, they create wealth because they, they get inventions. You know, they'll buy up a guy's invention and go market it end up employing a few thousand people. Like say it's an iPhone. Say it's an Apple computer. And the venture capitalist comes along, managing billions, and backs a kid in his garage with a computer. And it becomes Apple. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's what I was trying to save. But, you know, the Lord spoke. I'm not mad at the Lord. My friend, the Lord... He's invincible, and he's about to open up a big can of whoop-ass on this planet. He's going to let it all come down. He's going to make sure that people understand the lesson. and what They don't even know what was lost. They think the United States is still a country. They don't realize it's gone. It was overtaken. I know that Brother Thomas would agree with me, and now I, I have the ability, my studio's fixed, to do an interview, so I, I really want to talk to him about his thoughts about... Uh, all the confirmations of all the things that he said, the word communism, that was the whole center of the whole thing back in 2005, six, whatever. And it has all, I'm sorry, but that's all it is. And that's what it is. Also, that's also Satan's army. But, you know, and it's done that before. And it's basically communism breeds human misery. That's why the Chinese are getting off of it. They found that they do much better by stoking the economic engine by having free markets. They're learning that, so is Canada. Paid down their deficit. Only in this country do we have the most stupid people on earth who think that they can run the debt through the ceiling, saddle their kids with debt and their grandkids so they can have their food stamps and so they'll vote for Obama. I, I, you know, I saw the defeat, but I'm disgusted with any American who uh, went that way. I mean, I, I don't understand. Maybe it was just the, the optics and on television, you know, watching the, the glitz and the glamour of Hollywood and having a bomb. People don't really understand. We've been covering this for two days. There's another podcast I haven't put up as I'm speaking here. I will be putting it up today. I am frustrated in that one, so I'm ambivalent to put it up. I do call people morons and idiots. Now you want to hear it. <laughs> no. uh, maybe I'll put this up first. That could be interesting. I do... Uh, 
explain further. And I keep getting more revelations about Barack Obama and the world situation. And I had one today about war, about how, you know, World War III in 2013 or 2014, maybe probably earlier rather than later, how this is the, uh, well, I know this is not something that, and a lot of people are talking world war. And so I'm weighing in on it because there's no more point talking about the king, um, Barack Obama and his kingdom, because I I don't think you know the, the real estate involved. So, I mean, we kind of seen things in the news, but you also had, uh, in the book of Daniel, uh, you know, I keep going back to that and I keep saying, you know what, what I said about Obama and Daniel is really true. I've given myself, it's just, you know, I don't, it's such a mystery that it's hard to, you know, put anything holographic in concrete terms like the book of Revelation or this, but it's true. So that was the confirmation I had that came last night, and that's why I'm on the horn today with you. It's true what was said. You know, it's the most bizarre thing in the world because it was something completely unexpected. I'm sure, um, you know, Obama himself did not realize uh, the power that would be not of his own, which would come in. And what he could do with it. But of course he likes it. He likes all things like that. And uh, so the next thing after that is we can forget about Obama for now. You know, he's, it's just like, well, there's the king. Okay, fine. And that's really what he is. He's a king. He's not a, an elected official. He's not the president. He's not the... Um, He's none of those things. He's always behaved as a king and looked down upon the presidency like it wasn't good enough for him. But that's just part of that spirit that's animating him, obviously. And, you know, so people would say, well, part of this is psychology. This is what his father's dream was. Uh, Obama the first was to, uh, uh, to take down the system and destroy the evil colonialists and capitalists. And so he, he, though he says he's going to fix the economy, according to the uh, stats yesterday, middle class income had fallen down to 1969 levels and the middle class is about to be put into extinction, though he keeps talking about it. See, he'll keep talking like everything's normal while you die. (laughs) So the middle class has been put pretty much out. There is no middle class anymore. And, of course, the goal of all this would be the elimination of a middle class, the um, uh, complete abject poverty, being able to do what he wants and and always win or keep himself in power. And uh, because of a loyal following of poor people who get poorer and poorer by supporting him, but can't see it because they're all steeped also in the witchcraft. I told you the witchcraft was bad. Every poor country in the world has one thing in common, steeped in witchcraft and sorcery. They all are. Just check out your Nat Geo when they go to these various countries. And uh, look into it on, online. You'll see that witchcraft is, the, is used by powerful despots to keep the people down. And the same thing is happening here, and the people are... I'm so sorry, they're just falling into, and they think the government will take care of them, but they won't once they get their way. It's, it's not, they're not the government of this nation. There is no this nation. They are the government, if you like, intertwined with other people around the world that, that comprises a global government and a global military force. And what they're trying to do now is show you the iron fist a little at a time so you get used to it. You get used to having homeland security and checkpoints between states and, you know, you get used to being told you're a slave. You'll get, you know, they're going to gingerly, 
you know, take the guns away first with the semi-autos and just so you get used to that. And eventually um, that will go to uh, extermination, but they'll make it look like they're trying to save you while it's happening. Possibly plague. Uh, you know, I believe plague, war, and earth changes all work together in this period coming up in, uh, from here on in. Um, I'm sorry for you all. I'm sorry you did what you did. You had a chance to stave it off, but I suppose man being what he is, God being who he is, and his timetable and his will, that was going to come to this eventually. It was prophesied of the ancients. I was looking at Isaiah yesterday. And um, you can see that in, in Isaiah and uh, Daniel and parts of Ezekiel and Revelation. And you can see that these, that this situation seems to be coming to a conclusion. Um, and whether there's another civilization to prop up after it, and we all go into being, we're taken out of here and become beings of light with the Lord. And it, let's say he decides to have another go at this, or it continues on in some way. And there's another dimension where there's the kingdom of God. Let's say that's what it is. It's a dimensional thing. We're stuck here for now. But when our DNA is freed up, we become beings of light as we were before this. <laughs> Can you say disobedience? Was that it? I, I don't know. It feels like something like that, but I mean, who can prove it? Who can, who can know that? I know that you don't make more war with the beast. I know that you're not going to make war with Obama. And those people who are having the fiscal cliff issues, they can be tough if they like. If they're already running and rushing in to cave in. But say there's a fight. I sense there'll be a little fight or posturing. But just like the Obamacare, which is all about the microchip, it has to do with the chipping and control of the population for Satan. Click, bam, click, bam. As does numbering the census. All these things are satanic if you read your Bible. It's all of these things are from Satan's kingdom. All these things have nothing to do with man. Man wouldn't do what we have today, an abomination. Man wouldn't do that. Man, man without the devil would not number each other, would not take a census would not have, um, well, they're going to try to have the war, World War III, it will, it will be in and out. It will be civil and global. It will be external and internal. It will be uh, a confusion for most people. Um, you're going to have to turn off your televisions because all they do is lie to you and propagandize you. Um, I had watch Fox News for a time. But even they are covering up the truth. You know, they say they, they aren't, but, you know, they are, of course. You know, they're part of the problem. The, you know, part of them is tied in with the establishment. And the establishment knows not what it does. I, I'm convinced it's got to be. Certain key people may understand the plan as it's unfolding, but they don't know. They're just playing their part mindlessly, just as the population, when they go to... Well, the voting is now irrelevant. From here on in, every vote will be fixed. And there is no voting. When Romney went to the White House, it was to, you know, bow down to the king and, you know, to, to admit that secretly, yes, I know who you are and you have my support. And uh, the greater good is the new kingdom that we're going to build right here. Us Mormons have the same vision. <laughs> and uh, he may not like to kiss the ring. He may not like the man himself. But in his hierarchy, he has to bow down. And he did. And how does that make you feel? You like that? Everyone's going to bow down to this guy. This, this, that's the new boss. It, you just doubt what I'm saying. You just wait a while. Everything I'm saying here is already fulfilled. You're just late to the party. You're just late waking up. You just can't see how it really is. It's, 
once you hear a little bit of this podcast, it will just all open up and then you'll fill in all the blanks yourselves. You know, you'll, you'll know, you know, everything that's going to come, everything that must come, everything that's planned, everything they do, what their whole goal is, why they're going to do it, who's going to be involved, who's going to be, who's going to be harmed. Who's going who's gonna to do well? No one's going to do well except the, uh, you know, the people in power. You know, just like in Russia, you know, you had this great um, poor, no middle class, nothing but misery. You had the mob and you had the, and the people in power. There's not much to distinguish between the mob and the people in power. And the Russians are also involved behind the scenes, along with America, the U.S., and China, in planning the next, my goodness, I ran out of water there. Oh, well, you know, you're trying to do a podcast and get the word out to people. But, I, you know, I know you're probably saying, well, I know all that, Brother Z. I'm, I'm ahead of you on that. I read all the conspiracy blogs. They've been talking about Obama like that for years and months and days and weeks. Yes, but... Is it the, 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 well, then you, if you know all that, then I guess you know everything. There's no point for you to really listen to anything anymore, is there? Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying that confirming this, even if civilization continues on, finds a way after this period that's being, now make no mistake, it's being brought on by evil men, possessed by evil devils, certainly, but it's being done to you by certain human beings who exist in a state of total uh, autonomy and they don't fear for their lives. They can do what they want to you or billions of people and nothing happens to the one person that's doing it. It happened with Adolf Hitler. It happened with Joseph Stalin. It's amazing. The whole civilization will let one man, Alexander the Great, it goes on and on, one man decide the fate of millions who don't approve, who don't approve, yet have no courage to do anything about it. Right? Because they're afraid that, and people keep looking, well, someone else will do something, or it'll be the vote. No, the vote was fixed. It was fixed, both supernaturally, that's the main thing, it was... supernatural vote fixing it was magic magic can change things like that and people because they're shaking their heads still trying to figure out how they pulled up there was voter fraud yes where 150 percent of the people voted 150 percent for barack obama and not one for Rom. yeah there's that but it but there was something else that happened it has to do with the minds of people and and you know it's it's uh The same, you know, poor people that, you know, he's an elite rich guy and he's out of touch with poor people completely, 100%. But they will vote because they think he cares about them and he's going to take care of them. And he doesn't and he won't. The poor are worse off because in a communist or socialist regime, they're all kind of the same. The poor get poorer and the misery gets more miserable. Now you have the middle class dipping to where the poor, the upper poor is. Okay? And it's, he's doing it intentionally and he, with a smile on his face while he's spending $4 million in a $20 million estate or $25 million estate given to him because he's the king. That's why he gets gifts like that. In Hawaii... While this whole fiscal thing's going on, he's all over there enjoying himself. And the little poor people, they all enjoy seeing the king having fun. They like dictators. They do it again and again in South America. It's done again and again. I don't understand. I'm thinking maybe it is it education. Is it that they are steeped in um, superstition? You know, if I don't vote for him, bad things will happen to me. Oh, don't even think for a minute that's not going on. That's satanic intimidation. We're going to get into the whole thing. It's a, you know, in communist regimes, satanic ritual abuse is the absolute required norm. 
for all. I mean, what you thought was kind of a kept in secret here and there and per, you know, the whole pedophile SRA thing, you thought that was bad in America? Uh, when it gets to that, your children are owed to the despots. You need to give them over to be debauched and whatnot and used and abused or they're, they're, they're considered slaves of the state. Not wards of the state, slaves of the state. In other words, they will get control of the children. The whole purpose of that is um, to mess with them, to defile them, to sacrifice them, to use them and abuse them. I don't think that was even hidden. If you read your history of Joseph Stalin and the rest of them and Adolf Hitler and others, that kind of perversion was considered normal. Uh, if you have a nice looking kid and one of the uh, Gestapo goes by and they want to have sex with that kid, well, that's a done deal. If you oppose that, they shoot you in the head. Period. And, 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 you know, we've also seen Homeland Security, have we not? Behaving much like that SS in Germany already, doing lots and lots of things, getting caught, but no reprimand. No reprimand, because that's, they're encouraging that and they're hiring criminals, as you know, because criminals will intimidate people and will take advantage of the idea that they could start you know, abusing the people and get the people used to it. So they cower. So they won't fight back. I never thought America would be like that, a bunch of cowards. You know, I thought we were different than Germany. Uh, but, yeah, at this point, um, the cowards far, far, far outnumber um, any kind of patriot. So that's just horrifying. No, you can't be a patriot unless you have courage. Just speaking a truth like this, this is just truth. You, you, you don't have to get it here. You can get it in a number of places. This is just truth. <laughs> People actually wrote me, said this was old fashioned. This, this, what I'm talking about is old fashioned. Oh, I see. Kicking out King George and revolting against the British, that's old fashioned. <laughs> and I guess what's new fashion is bowing down and being a slave. That's the new fat. That's cool. Okay. And fighting for freedom, that's hokey. I gotcha. Understood. See how brainwashed they are. And I get that from, you know, kids are like, you know, that are down for the Obama thing. It's like, if you're not in that, you're not cool. You're old fashioned. You're like Romney, this old fashioned, out of touch white guy. Who wants him? He, another reason he lost was because all that painting and character assassination of him is just out of touch white guy who doesn't know anything. Just a dolt and a buffoon. Who wants that? I want the cool Barack. So a lot of the voting was just based on that without people knowing any facts whatsoever. You know, it's over now. I just want to show you the identity... I told you this before. Told you this in two, over the years. I've told you who he is. You know he's considered to be a, also royal bloodline elite. You know there is that too. And however way you slice it, he's you know he's their new pharaoh. And just like in those days, they worship him because the power in him is their god Satan, and so they worship him to get a piece of that for themselves, based on self-interest. All for you, Damien. And it's all for this new dictatorial order. Now, in Egypt, Morsi has assumed dictatorial powers, and he says he's going to relinquish those as soon as uh, they vote on this constitution. And when that's ratified, he will take away his dictatorial powers. His true role is he's Obama's chief lieutenant in the entire Middle Eastern region, not just Egypt. The Muslim Brotherhood extends to all through uh, Arabia. Okay? The Middle East. Um, including Benghazi. And 
Obama has done at, by using the Muslim Brotherhood in Benghazi to funnel rockets and things to our enemies, to terrorists, um, and not really fighting Al Qaeda, to solidify the Muslim Brotherhood power in the Middle East. And the Obama administration has been involved. This is far worse than Fast and Furious. This is called aiding and abetting the enemy with um, Stinger missiles capable of knocking down airliners, passenger planes. Okay, now they're missing these weapons. They're in the hands of uh, terrorists that, Obama's, that, that are Obama's other flank of military that he controls. So Obama is king of the Muslim Brotherhood. He's the head of that as a military force, of which Al-Qaeda is obviously a part. So Obama is also the head terrorist in the world. <laughs> when you connect the dots, it's, it's horrible. And the people, yeah, and the news media are afraid because if anyone steps out of line, they will be, they will lose their job. But I mean, they would also have, there's a danger their families will be in trouble. So they go along. Um, they know they're doing it. They, they, the Washington Post has come to understand Obama's uh, forked tongue when he spoke about giving, uh, putting uh, entitlements on the table in exchange for revenue increases, tax increases, which has nothing to do with raising revenue because when you raise taxes, you're taking money out of the private sector that would have been spent in the private sector, so therefore you're lowering the whole economic base. You're destroying the economy. That's what it has to do with. You don't raise taxes on people during any kind of recession or depression like we're in now. This all has to do with confiscation of private property eventually and wealth, centralization of power of the state, and taken out of the private sector for the destruction of all people in America to destroy them all, which is something I talked about years ago, to kill them all, to have other people take hold of their factories, their cities, and to finally destroy this, and of course, along with that, destroy the Republican Party. I'm not saying the Republican Party, nothing I've ever been, I'm a, I did register to vote as an independent. And I wouldn't even give the Libertarians my whole support because I just don't want anyone to tell me anything what to do. But um, the left must get rid of any kind of constitutionalist which there were still some in the Republican Party. So that gone, the wealth class gone, the middle class completely gone. And look, the middle class, by and large, is cheering on Obama. And while he destroys them, they're cheering him on and giving him standing ovations while they're being killed. It's the beautiful satanic right. This is what every Satanist longs for their whole life. To, to be killing the victim while the victim's praising them. And, and or have, even better, have the victim kill himself while he's praising his benefactor, his, his rulers. You know, he'll die on cue. All for you, Damien. Don't you understand? <laughs> please, please for once. Please don't start giving me other kinds of theories, other kinds of ideas you may have. Because all those have been wrong. Oh, God. I look at the flow of information over the time, and I'm whining, huh? <laughs> I look at the flow of information that I put out over time, and uh, it's all been, you know, looking back on it, unbelievably accurate. You know, it's just, you know, the Iran next thing I was putting out in 2004, three and four, you know, the... George W. Bush signed the covert war into being. He signed the document to allow the CIA to conduct a covert war in Iran. And we thought it would be a hot war. Turned out it was a covert war that's gone on all this time. But, but you see, Iran very much is part of all this. And I think that was something in the making. And a few years hence after mentioning it, here we are. So nothing has been... People will come to understand what I've said about the president and why he's above the law. I mean, people have wondered, how come he is above the law? 
Why is he? Why is he uh, able to say break the law with Fast and Furious or the Benghazi thing? And and the cover up is because they don't want you to find out about the weapons dealing to the enemy. Because if you found out about that, you know, but you never will find anything out because you're you sit there and pretty much take whatever's given to you, or you go to the extreme conspiracy blogs that make that say things over the years that had never come due that are not plausible. And so it's like, you know, what are you gonna do? Now, what is your role in all this? What's my role in all this? The answer is, we just become God's will. That's all. We go where we're going to go. Do what we're going to do. <laughs> I'm going to write a lot about a lot of this in music. And right now I have something to mix, so I'm not really composing. I'm, I'm fixing to, to do a, a big record about all this you know, a story. And I will employ uh, several musicians in the uh, compositions and things and then and weave it together. And it will be a sonic delight, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I don't see any, I see that as my place to fulfill this gift of the sonic thing that I've been given, this mantle, you know, as Zedja, I have to, carry this mantle. So I figure what I, what I, what I believe, and I th- a lot of people believe this, is wedding and storytelling to the, the sonnet, to music and cinematic music and then, and then singer-songwriter songs and kind of weaving it all together is a tapestry to tell a story about what's happening and even to tell children's stories or allegor- allegorical stories will be a mode of communication in the future because this kind of talk uh, will be illegal. And when it's illegal, I won't do it. I will do it through the sonic medium. I will put out music, but I mean, that's no guarantee the um, Stasi won't come and question me about that. Obviously, they'll think I'm sending hidden messages to the underground, which of course, you know, would be because they could listen to it and they wouldn't hear what it says. What does this mean, Z? It uh, doesn't mean anything. It's just a children's story. It's a story about a guy and a girl up against all odds and how they get separated and how he goes to rescue her, risking his life, and uh, along the way, all the things that happen. You know? And that's why we have, you know, and they interact and we have a little dialogue. Anyway, these, these are some ideas I have about uh, how we move forward. And I think at this point, there's no reason. And, and then you wouldn't, you know, I, I have to have the podcast going at the same time as that. So that's a lot of work. And so I need to be careful to pace myself and uh, a lot of, meaning it's like, you know, 20 hours a day in one room, you know, with that amount of electricity going off, it's turning me into a light bulb already. Uh, so there has to be a balance, of course. But you know how albums were beloved? Remember The Wall? Pink Floyd? You know, the, I always related to that as being... I always felt like I was incarcerated in a mental hospital. And I was just trying to figure out my options. And The Wall comes along. And it... Um, you know, basically it's speaking to me about this whole sad situation and I start to feel better that I'm on the inside looking out rather than the outside looking in. You know, the inmates are running the, the asylum inside. Now, powers. Powers. And this is a Rima for you and I buried it deeply in this 44 minutes in. Powers, fa- Folks. I got good news, but I don't want you to abuse these powers. You know, when, when sometimes you give a kid a Ferrari, you know, if you're really rich and you can give that to your kid, and that, you know, that's the worst thing you could do to a 16-year-old kid who wants to be cool in high school. You can just tell what's going to happen with that Ferrari after, you know, it becomes a chick wagon for a while. 
And, you know, then there's the drugs and the drinking and the going crazy and then the crashing of it and getting in trouble and sort of like a sort of a Lindsay Lohan kind of approach to uh, high school. Wouldn't be good. Right. So she'll have fun, fun, fun till daddy takes the, the T-bird away, you know. OK, so you're about to get this Ferrari. And I do like Ferraris. Love to be able to fit in one someday. <laughs> Actually, I no, I don't want to own. I, see, I don't want to own anything that I have to do maintenance on. But you know, that would be kind of a funny thing having a guy like me. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'll save that for the old guys down in Florida with with their their 25 year old girlfriends and their all gray hair and their big pot bellies and and having their yachts and whatnot. But anyway, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a cliche down there. <laughs> Just go down to South Beach and you'll see everything. Uh, anyway, so what's happening, is, and I'm going to lay this ring on you. You know, this is, I'm going to lay this on you from the Lord. And, and the Lord is, is speaking and, and just, it's, see, it's like when the Lord speaks to me, it's not necessarily verbal. It's waves, not like snow, not like a satellite. It's, it's a, I can't even explain it, so I won't. I'm part of the communication device. It's like a, I'm talking to me in a way, but it comes through nonlinear. So the first bit of good news, and I'm holding it back because I want you to finally just appreciate what you've got going on here. You know, I just feel like, and I, I just have to bear my heart because my frustration yesterday was warranted because people aren't really getting what's being said here. The keys are given out through the even through the language, even if it's not talking about anything, there's, okay, well, here's what it is. I'm sorry. Here's what it is. The power that you saw with Obama, and now you're getting all for you, Damien, that reaction because of what's in him. A power not his own. The book of Daniel explains perfectly about him. Um, and, and, and the kingdom, rather than, you know, a fierce king, rather than he people thought he was a wimp. <laughs> but you saw him get tremendous powers, even the power to be above the law and in public and the power to persuade mass amounts of people while he's lying. you clearly lying. But he somehow is able to do things mortals can't do. I've never seen it, anything like this before. Nor have I read about it. And I've, you know, back when I went to school, I did get an education, you know, Unlike what happens today, I had to study history, world history, you know, American history, uh, literature from world literature and American literature, uh, philosophy, plays, economics, psychology, you know, all those disciplines I studied, took them very seriously as well, and I, and I really enjoyed them. But I did get an education at least. And then the fulfillment of my education was when I got all these books, all the books of the world that you could get. And for about a decade, I read them all. I, I just read, I had an insatiable appetite. And then after a decade of reading, I just stopped <laughs> and, and went back to visuals like movies and different things. But I read, the, I couldn't get enough. I would read, 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 read everything. And... The conclusion of this was that, that I understood where kind of things came from, the flow of history, and, um, and then eventually it, it, you know, the, the Bible came into it later, and that kind of made it all make sense. No, the education was, I admit, vanity, but I'm glad I had it, because when I saw it was vanity, I rejected you know, just reading books for salvation. I rejected that idea, but I still had the imprint of all the knowledge. And here's the point, if there is one. Obama has these tremendous powers. And, you know, when I say education, I mean, in my education, I haven't seen anything like that before, like the Obama situation. If there are historians among you, perhaps you would have 
I don't know, what would you say, a Genghis Khan or something? I, I, I don't know. I haven't seen anything like this. This is different. This is more like the serpent in the garden. The beguiling spirit. But very powerful over all the other spirits. Okay, so that power is rising up over the last couple of years. Because when it began in 2008, that power wasn't there. We prophesied about it. But it wasn't there yet. People said, ah, come on. Of course, they mocked it then. They're not mocking it now, but they'll mock this. And they'll mock it every time I say anything will be mocked, you know, constantly or ignored. But that's okay, because the whole point is, it's not really about me. It's not going to gratify me if people listen or they don't listen. What it is, is it, it gets said as a witness, as a placeholder. So it gets spoken and said, and it's there. And so that there is no excuse for whatever God wants to do. You know, he has, has to establish a witness. So if he has something he wants to say, it gets said in an obscure podcast, but it doesn't matter. It's in the record. And that's my role, to put things of God in the record. You know, this is a di- we're not studying the past and prophecy and, you know, making uh, projections about the future here. Now we're actually causing and affecting the world, each one of us. We are now engaged. So here's, here it is. The powers that he has, you have, from obviously another source, from the Lord. You have been kept down as humanity has. It's the curse of humanity. The people that went to the devil's side, they got powers and they were able to rule over you. And that's been that way from the beginning of time. You know, it would be Nimrod, the mighty men of the earth. These are the rulers and the bloodline elites down through George Bush and the rest and Obama and all of them. But now there's something different. That power has risen up on the satanic side to a state that people marvel and they're on their knees and they're 666 on their foreheads and they're going to their private dances and their private soirees where they usually bring in a sacrificial victim and have an orgy and stuff. They're doing all this stuff. Just in a day, it's like it's... ah. And anyone can will anyone to just drive off the cliff and they'll do it. Ah. It's like... Oh, the, the, <laughs> it's like... You know, the, the worst horror movie you ever saw, and I mean worse both in the way of being a bad movie and having horrific things like that happen, like, I can will you to kill yourself. <laughs> and Satanists love petty things like that. I can will you to be humiliated. <laughs> I can will you to do something stupid. <laughs> and they get, and most of their lives are spent on things like that. That's as far as it goes. The megalomaniacs use that collective power spoken of throughout the entire Bible, which is half the Bible is that. So not something that's hidden. It's so ridiculous to say a cult when it's in your face. It's horrible to have to live here with such incredible stupidity, but I'm going to reel that back. I'm going to reel that back. To see all the lizards, you know, popping, you know, all seeing eye, boom, 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 all on cue around you. And then with the wave of your head, just boom, flick them away. Sit there. You will serve me my lunch and you will not touch it. You will do a good job. This thus saith the Lord. And then they all scatter and they all, then they do a good job. Because your power is rising at the same level Obama's power is in the spirit. Those who have left the faith will not know what I'm talking about. Those who got obsessed with conspiracy theory won't know what I'm talking about. Those who have been speaking and communicating with the Lord constantly were in that, that family of God. I want you to know that your power, and this is the, the Rima for today, you know, this is what the Lord wanted me to tell you last night. Your power rises in conjunction with Obama's in equal measure. Yes, your power, you, one of you, or two of you, or six of you, your individual power 
like I said, don't run redline the Ferrari. Uh, you too can speak life and healing and have it done and raise the dead or speak a word and have an instant death like Ananias and Sapphira. Oh, you could say the Holy Spirit killed them, but it was really Peter that spoke that word, wasn't it? You understand? You don't redline the Ferrari. You don't go around cursing people because you don't like what they do. They know not what they do. You need to have the heart of Christ or else you will be, if you abuse your power, you will be kicked out. You want everything to be in in concert with the Lord's will. At the same time, you don't want to be a hesitant person. I'm going to check and recheck and make sure this and I'm just going to sit here and do nothing. Yeah, you're going to hide, huh? Trish and I, well, I mean, we've had, you know, through prayer and through, through, uh, through the Holy Spirit, we've had power like this, you know, on and off. Not something you could rely on, not something like this where it comes in and it's just there. And um, why God's giving this power? Because whenever there's a power of evil that rises up, there's an equal power of God that rises up and his church is his people. He can only have it rise up in the remnant who are his people. It's not going to rise up in the secular 501c3 church because obviously they failed and they are in his wrath right now in being punished by their prayers not being answered by the fact that being made, you know, eventually when there's persecution of the 501c3 church, you know, uh, the pastors aren't even allowed to speak the truth. They can't even mention a guy like Obama or anybody else. So without mentioning Obama, you can't get the, re- you actually can't get a sermon. Unless you can talk about what's written in the book, in the Bible, prophetically, and apply it to people today, if you can't do that, then you don't get the truth. Therefore, they abrogated their responsibility. Therefore, they are neutered and moot. Their power, if you know anyone that's a churchian, I wouldn't even have, I don't even have these people pray over me. I wouldn't, I won't allow it. Now, they can do it on their own. They can do whatever they like. But in my presence, no, I will stop them. Please do not pray over me. You know, when you become my brother, I become your brother. When you, you know, at that point, when you wake up and, 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 and you let the Lord direct your prayers, and if he says to pray over me, then on that day, I welcome you, brother. Thank you. Pray over me, sister. Pray. Thank you. But not until then. It's called discernment. And no, it's not just people I disagree with. That's not, that's, no, people, I know a lot of people I disagree with who I consider brothers and sisters and be happy to have their prayers. I covet their prayers. But, you know, I'm talking about the hypnotized, mind-controlled masses, the great unwashed, many of whom happen to label themselves Christians and are members of churches. These are the great know-nothing people they know less than people in the, they know less than the brainwash. They know nothing. It's like, I guess they're, they're, they're just asleep awaiting to be awakened. And um, some of these, I've, I've, you know, I've heard them do their music. Their music, it's all derivative. Yeah, it's everything that's been done before. It's like there's a culture and there's a certain appropriate music they play. And they all can be interchanged. They all wear the same kind of t-shirts and dockers and have the same little goatee. And you can put them, you can mix and match and rearrange them any way you like. But does Obama worry about them? No. No, not for one second, of course he doesn't. How about the black church with all the bishops and, you know, the Al Sharptons or the other, you know, the Reverend Jesse Jackson, all those, does he worry about, no, of course he doesn't worry about that. No, no. How about that guy, Reverend Manning, the black pastor who has called Obama pretty much the Antichrist from the beginning. And, you know, he's been going public with it, but been considered a fool. He's no fool, that man. But I don't consider him, uh, you know, I don't really see people black and white. That's what they do. I see him as a human being. I just... Whatever color your skin is, that's a ridiculous thing. I, I, I get into it when I say the black church because th- there is a black church. So we can't say there isn't one. But in terms of human being, when you're right, when the Lord raises you up 
you are colorblind. I mean, you just don't talk about race. So when that's spoken of in, and I know there've been a lot of false preachers and churches that were racist in the past. And the, the, you know, the black church was arised out of the slave church, addressed it. And they had, there was physical, it, you couldn't ignore the, the, the prejudice and things like that. But, you know, in, in a way, what's sad is that there, there could have been a healing on this front, but we're more segregated today than ever before. And it's, our, I just, you put me in, you know, and I have a, a, a color, my skin has a color, and it actually goes pretty dark when I'm in the sun a lot. But you put me on an island with everybody else, no matter what their color, we wouldn't see color. We just wouldn't do that. It'd have to be taught to us. Someone would have to impose it upon us. We just wouldn't make those distinguishments. It just wouldn't happen. It, can, it couldn't happen. You know, you judge people based on the merits and like, uh, one guy may have a talent in this area, one guy may have a talent in that area, get together and be able to do some things. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But no, something divides us all. It's Satan. I'm telling you, it's spiritual wickedness in high places. These principalities own these pastors, these reverends and these bishops and these politicos hiding out in the Catholic church and various people. And they own them all. Evangelical churches, I call them the church now of Adolf Hitler because they're the same ones who gave Hitler the cover to do what he did. The same thing. They are the same church. See no evil, do no evil, you know, be deaf, dumb, and stupid. And don't say a darn thing. Don't mention the word Obama or any other thing like that. Don't ever say what's... You can't separate the king. He's not president. He's a king, and this is not America. So, a, but it would take a preacher to be able to sit there and explain how it's not America. Explain how the elites don't look at it as America. Explain how it's just there like Santa Claus for the people. Explain how it's really a global system already, which can't be seen, so it's Mystery Babylon. Explain how, you know, how it really looks prophetically through the Bible right now based on the real landscape and real borders, not the false ones. See, that's all stuff that you'd have to get from prophets, revelators, whatever, people that have Rima, people that have teaching. They'd have to be, the Holy Spirit would have to come in, you know, dis- discern all that, grok all that, put it all out there. And then once, once we say that in the pulpit, the people would really truly be free. They would see what they're up against and they would start to pray. They pray that the Lord would bless them and bless the land and would rid this corruption. And they would no longer call it, you know, the United States, but could we have a land where there are those principles, freedom and liberty to worship, to work, uh, where those things could exist? Lord, deliver us. And, you know, then the word would come in and would start turning around into... But we all know that nothing here could be as good as Zion. Nothing here could be as good as, you know, the new Jerusalem, which is who we are. We are the new dimension, the new Jerusalem. God basically, where, where is God's throne? In us. Why do we need to be spotless so he can reside in us? To yearn for him, to reside in us. What's the... What would that do power-wise? We wouldn't be here on this planet in this dimension. There would be a, it would be something totally different. And it's the thing people learn, yearn to go back to because they have like a memory of it. And that's weird because here we are now. Uh, Brother Thomas would call that a preview or a pre-memory of something to come in the future, like a glimpse. I call it a memory because I'm just going to flat out say it. I don't, I am a complete and total that I can't, I don't have a system like in the East, but in terms of, you know, if you, if you think you've lived in whatever form, because I mean, you know, you have, I just, you know, I read the scriptures about John the Baptist and Elijah and Jesus and, and, uh, and all that. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, yeah, I see it for what it is. I'm not going to harp on it, 
you know, because I, I've had states of being, and I even, I even exist right now that I'm talking to you in another state of being somewhere else where I'm already that, that person that I'm yearning to get back to. I'm already there, just that I'm aware of here. So it can't be explained in terms of reincarnation exactly like the Eastern folk, you know, linear progression thing. Uh, I don't buy into that, but I do buy into multiple location, multiple incarnation of each being. And infinite possibilities when one is set free. We're in a prison right now. We're not allowed to think those thoughts. We're not allowed to get out of here. We're not allowed to take the Ferrari out for a spin. We'd like to, but we're not allowed to. Well, a little bit of that is lifting because, you know, if you look at the promises of God in, and, and if you really understand when the Lord calls us to be his own and you look at the uh, story of the two witnesses and you look at the story of who had powers. Yes, yeah, so we can look at the two witnesses. I just think the two witnesses are as well us. I, I you know, there may be some special super guys like with a little W on their chest and a cape. I don't know. <laughs> but that increasing of power is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, yours is subtle to where, you know, you heal someone in, by walking into the room and leaving, not even knowing who it was that you healed. That's what I'm talking about. You walk by and all the lights go on. That's what I'm talking about. You say nothing, but a whole sermon is preached. That's what I'm talking about. You will now have the capability of interacting with angels and seeing things that other people won't see. That will bring you, it's a gift because it's going to make you more interested in the things of the Lord because you're going to see things that are not hokey at all. They're not like chick tracks that are just mind-blowing to you. And it's going to get you really more interested in the word. And you're going to just be completely dedicating yourself as the bride of Christ. You're the the bride. You know, we're in a way, we're the damsel in distress waiting to be rescued, but we're the new Jerusalem. We are the, um, the, the, the whole purpose of this creation was the fulfillment of that new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem is the fruit of this whole thing. Although it's not connected up, it's a mystery in the Bible. It looks like deus ex machina, you know? Deus ex machina. Yes, I was educated. <laughs> deus ex machina uh, in Greek tragedy and in Greek plays. I should say not necessarily tragedies. But Greek plays. And Greece was really the, you know, developed the play, you know? Remember Oedipus? <laughs> well, anyway, in Greek plays, sometimes when they... And, and more so in Roman plays, actually, than Greek the Romans, I think it was the Romans who invented deus ex machina because he had the gods up there, you know, Zeus and all that. So when they got to a plot point they couldn't resolve where the hero looked like there's no way out of this mess he's in, there'd be something from the gods above. A machine would come down onto the proscenium and would take out the opposition and the hero would win and the people would cheer. That's what they call deus ex machina, God from above. Or God machine. You know, the, the God machine would intervene. Deus ex machina. I'm not sure what ex means, but machina is a machine in Latin. Like a, like a car, a chariot could be a machina. Um, a coffee machine is a machina. And in Italian, that you know, similar. Right? And Spanish, yeah. So, this thing comes down from above... You know, like the New Jerusalem. And goody, we get to all hop on board. And uh, I was having a talk with a brother the other day, and it was like, yeah, you know, why do we make it so complicated? We are the New Jerusalem. I mean, why do we have to make it everything like a location in a comic book art? You know, like chick tracks, which I, you know, I, I just hate those. They're the same kind of artwork that you see in the Jehovah's Witnesses books. And I hate that. And the Mormon books, come to think of it. And I hate that, too. Now, I love music, you know, like Amazing Grace and classical music and inspired music. I guess it's, it's who it comes from. You know, if 
say Brother Tom has sung Amazing Grace or Kelly or somebody else that I've worked with, um, we w- I would just be in tears. But if one of them sings it in their 501c3, I'm offended. And I don't want to be offended. It just in- it comes up in me like a little bit of a... a, a you know, a BS detector Zzz, comes up and it just, and it puts a little radar out, goes, oh, that's not coming. That's, but on the other hand, I'm, I'm saying, yeah, but look, wouldn't you rather have that song being sung? It's like, no, I'd rather see some heavy metal talking about Jesus, man. If you're going to give me that, give me heavy metal. I would love to do it. If there's any heavy metal, serious artist. I, yeah, I'm always going to be auditioning people for that. Love to do a to produce a heavy metal act, but don't think I will right now because I got my plate full. But yeah, heavy metal Jesus, I'll take that any day over Amazing Grace if it's real. If it's, I just don't think there'd be heavy metal people that would fake it about Jesus. Although I know they're playing the church circuit, and that's fine. I'll play the church circuit too. I mean, as a producer, behind the scenes creating shows that are going to bother them, bug them. Yes, I'm all for making a walking in the front door, setting up on a stage, and, you know, just playing normal music, but see, that never works that way. The thing, people start having problems and they start screaming and things start going wrong and stuff starts blinking. Just like when my studio blew up here recently, I told people what it was. They don't believe me. I know what it was. It's demonic. It was an attack. Uh, people can't see. They want a cause and effect explanation for everything. The, the fact of the matter is we're going into the high state of spiritual warfare. So you're not victims. Your power rises as his power rises. And yet he will make war with the saints. And he will win for a time. So, but the reason that he doesn't win definitively in the end is because this power of God, of Yahweh, of Elohim, the one, of the creator, is more powerful than satanic power. It's that simple. In crucifying or killing Christians in the past, the faith grew even stronger. By leaving them alone, like in America, the faith grew weaker. In fact, failed. The Christian church in this country failed completely. And I wouldn't even say there is one here. It's dead. Christianity is dead. But Christ is alive. The remnant is alive. Um... Those who woke up and walked out of Babylon, you're alive. You know, mystery Babylon is, one of the mysteries of Babylon is that when you're in it, when you're in Babylon, what happens? You get hypnotized. You don't know it, but you are controlled. Your mind is not your own. So that's why Jesus said, you got to forgive them. Yeah, he couldn't be mad at them when he, they were crucifying him. Because they really didn't know what they were doing. And it had to be done anyway to fulfill the promise of the Lord to redeem his people out of this mess. You know, it doesn't mean he redeems every, everything. But then again, if it isn't redeemed in the end, it's not of God, meaning it wouldn't create it anyway. It's just an illusion. So it's all good in the end. The point is, there's great power and weakness. They come at you with a sword, you come at them with... I love you in prayer, and Lord, forgive them. You win. They lose. It's that simple. That kind of power. Not the power to be a martyr. I don't believe in... There are martyrs in the world sacrificing themselves for a cause, but when you have power in Christ, if they kill you because they're Satanists, or if they can get away with it, they'll, you know, even in this country, if they find a way to get away with it, they'll... They'll they'll, they'll try to arrange an accident or poisoning or something. Uh, What's in you is greater than 
what's in the world. And when, if something like that happens and they're successful, you in your Christness win. You in your lovingness win. You in your forgiveness beat the crap out of them. They are left with a scar and a guilt they can't shake unless they do more bad stuff, which comes down, which leads to their ruin and their ruination. You've killed them. Though they think they killed you, you've killed them without so much as lifting a finger. Your power is far greater than theirs. That power of Christ comes up. And yes, the power of Rima, the power of tongues, the power of uh, revelation, the power of healing, the power of education, the power of teaching, the power of uh, healing, the power of raising the dead, the power of bring of not sorcery power. Now in the two witnesses, we have power that if anyone dare to touch them or if they see anyone doing anything, they don't, they don't want done or whatever, they can strike them and kill them. Anything. And this is a mystery, and we're going to need to spend days just on the two witnesses because it can't be explained away so easily. If Christ is Christ and forgiveness is king and letting them kill you is, is how you win, how do you explain the two witnesses? Well, it's a double-edged sword. There is a time for war and killing the enemy at the same time. And um, that was another vision I had, that there, is, there will be factions that will kill in the name of Christ as in, as in the days of old. Absolutely. And they're, they're going to try to... But it won't be by just sword power. It will be by supernatural power. And who is going to be the lamb and who will be the lion is determined by the Lord. But one thing is for sure, that power of the lion, of the lamb is rising equally to Obama moving the Sandy Storm and all the things that they did. And you're, you're not talking about just one person. You're talking about covens, witchcraft, Kenya, here, there, Europe, Asia, where the whole Asian China is completely based on one thing, and that's Luciferianism. I mean, it's their uniforms and all that. It's completely that. <laughs> There's nothing but that. Because that's what communism is. It's Satanism. It's just Satanism physicalized is all it is. And uh, so, yeah, on the Zephyr report, you were, you were to understand these days. You knew this economy was going to, this was going to happen. It's been done intentionally by people who intended to do harm to you and your family. And they have. And they're just people. Do you ever wonder... Why there's been no opposition? Supernatural. Because I don't, I don't care. What, what, I'm not even talking about might. I'm talking about opposition. Any kind of opposition. You ever wonder why the Republican Party were turned into victims? Because their minds were taken over. They have the majority in the House and they could stop whatever plan, but they've been hypnotized to think they have to bow down. I mean, don't you see? Well, maybe with this new infusing of power. Oh, yes. Another one of the powers that you'll receive is the power of energy. Being energized. Being excited. Being positive. You, it's hard to be negative when you've got this beam coming at you from God. It's impossible. You're going to be you know, uh, rejuvenated. That's another power that the Lord has spoken of very clearly. Rejuvenation is a big part of it. Um, that's a theme that's happened throughout the Bible for God's people. Of course, the big example would be Abraham, right? <laughs> oh yeah, there's no slowing down of that guy. No. So, uh, likewise with you. Why? Because God knows. He knows that his people need to be empowered 
It, otherwise, it wouldn't be fair. I mean, it would be like one power out of equilibrium raises up without the other power causing equilibrium. It's unnatural. It's not... If you study nature and God's creation, you'll see he makes everything to come to equilibrium, including this. So just have confidence. Why have you lost your confidence? Why do you feel like a victim? So we need to be talking about what, what, what's music? What does music have to do with anything? Music is far more powerful than sitting here talking. I know people don't realize this, but music, you put it on the iPod pod or the car stereo or at home or whatever, you watch YouTubes with the right music, it changes the atmosphere, changes things. It can actually heal you. You can actually get empowered and, and, and you can have a change. I, I know that, that the voice is also music. I know that. The word and the, the tones are what music is. I understand that. So when you hear the right, so when you hear this voice, <laughs> It changes things. So we've got to put out a lot more tones, a lot more frequencies coming from inspiration from the Almighty Yah to change things. And it's another one of these powers, like the two witnesses. This is bringing something out from the ether in here that seems to zap the uh, destiny. Because a lot of these people think right now, they think, oh, we're going to get it. Obama's got the power now. We're going we're gonna to get ours. I got news for them. They will never attain their kingdom. They will never really attain their new world order, their new Atlantis. They will not attain anything new. They will reap the whirlwind, and the whirlwind is what they're going to get. My friend, the Lord God, Yahweh Almighty, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, he is about to open up a big can of whoop-ass, and it's called you. And with that, I bid you shalom, and I'll see you next time.